Well, as the Los Cruces community continues to address a growing homeless population and a rise in crime, I was actually able to secure a one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview with New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. Yeah, and Selena, so she told you that this is a statewide issue, right? And that if it's not addressed, things are going to inevitably get worse. Yes, and when I requested this interview, I specifically asked for it to be done at one of the areas in Las Cruces. You're seeing video of that right here. This dirt lot here has turned into a makeshift encampment, and I asked if she could do the interview there with me. She said yes, and here's what she had to say about the situation that is making the land of enchantment not so enchanting anymore. New Mexico is like the third most dangerous state in America. Just moments ago, the governor had to stay inside of the vehicle that she arrived in because Las Cruces police, along with New Mexico State Police, were here trying to remove an individual from that specific encampment right there in this dirt lot right across the street from Casa de Peregrinos in Las Cruces. KFAX 14 requesting the body camera footage from that moment to provide context to the harsh reality this community is faced with. <laughs> And we're just recycling human beings. I think it's outrageous. New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham is not shying away from the fact that cities like Las Cruces are seeing an unprecedented rise in homelessness and safety concerns. I brought many experts from places like LA and Dallas and Washington DC to a mayor's conference to talk to local leaders about what is it that we need to be doing to improve the quality of life and supports for people who are unhoused, who are victims and vulnerable. And what do we do about the intersection of public safety? And this gr it's growing faster than we can manage. She says the problem is bigger than these individuals not having a roof over their head. She says that group of experts told her. who have a very specific drug dealing, fentanyl, underworld current, and a very vulnerable population that's caught in that environment and said, and this is, and I quote, we have never seen anything like this before. And I'm willing to put real money here. Give these folks services that they need. Let's get housing built. This is a perfect site. Let's get more sheltering in places where it makes sense. Can you talk about who's going to pay for all of that? The state can pay for a ton of it. Um, we're lucky that we have money. Yeah, we're dispersing uh, money out of my $20 million fund. We're hiring people. Uh, our housing experts already been to this community. They're looking at places to develop affordable housing. And I have more than $200 million for housing which can be leveraged with federal funds, which can turn into 500 million pretty readily. We want, my goal is 30,000 houses in a year. The need for that affordable housing, immense. When I get out of the car and talk to someone who's unhoused, I have yet to find somebody who's from New Mexico. And you just heard from New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. She says that most of the unhoused people in our community that she speaks with, most of them aren't even from here. So me and my photographer, we went ahead and actually spoke with some of these people to hear what their circumstances are and to see if that is even the case. I'm from North Carolina. I mean, I've been out here. I've been to Tent City three times. And been out here is better out here because the way this, the way politics. Grisham says that right there is an example and indication that something's different here. And I would submit to folks it's because there aren't any ground rules or requirements or accountability measures. And we're all accountable. Otherwise, you have chaos. We can't serve people who can't say yes to service unless we have a body of laws that allow us to fairly and respectfully do that. And until the legislature change that, more people will come. And the states that are successful at both providing good support and solving the problem have those guardrails, and we do not. So alongside Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, you actually saw the mayor of Las Cruces. He is the first mayor in almost two decades there, and she brought him along on our interview to also provide some context. You'll hear more from him coming up tonight on KFOX 14 News at 5 and then again on KFOX 14 News at 9. But in the next hour of the KFOX 14 Morning News, what New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham says her plans are to put those guardrails that she was talking about in place to not only get more people the treatment they need to become successful members of society, but to also make sure there is stronger accountability measures in place as well. 
Continuing our coverage now on what's being done to address homelessness and rise in crime in the city of Las Cruces. Yeah, and in the previous hour, Selena, we got a first look at your interview with New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham. Now, she told you about plans to bring in 30,000 affordable housing units to the state of New Mexico, also giving you a timeline of a year, right? Yeah, so that is what her goal is, but her other goal is to make sure the state and local government entities have stronger accountability measures in place to keep criminals off the streets. We're just recycling human beings. I think it's outrageous. The unhoused community is a complex issue that New Mexico Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham says she's working to address. You worry about the people who are out here in the sun and their animals, and then you're also worried about what you know can be repercussions and the safety of your kids. You don't let them walk around here, do you, by themselves? Oh, absolutely not. This is not a problem that is unique to Las Cruces. It is a problem, in my view, that is very unique now to New Mexico. As we're trying to get services and the legal tools I need, competency is one, so judges aren't just saying you've got a drug abuse issue or you've got a, a substance abuse issue or a mental health issue or both. They don't have a legal tool to hold you and, and make you go through a trial or get you into behavioral health. They release you right back here over and over and over again, just in cruises. We're talking hundreds of cases, including cases where violent felonies have been committed. What I say to folks in Doniana County and Las Cruces, we must create compassionate, fair supports, but not at the expense of every single other community member. That means I need the legal tools to actually make a difference. Grisham tells me there are multiple challenges when it comes to addressing the unhoused population. Now, I'm telling you unequivocally, we have the interviews, we talk to police, uh, uh, lots of jurisdictions won't even arrest anymore. I can look at the data from the DAs, I have DAs that won't prosecute misdemeanors. There has to be a way to commit people to inpatient and community services. So Las Cruces taught me that. You have one of the most successful, but it's very limited, uh, outpatient assisted treatment. It's basically mandated medication and related behavioral health. They will tell you that they have a limited number of willing participants because willing is the issue. A court can adjudicate you to the program, but they can't hold you in contempt of court if you don't follow it through. The vast majority of their clients, individuals, consumers, patients, don't stay. So this is the issue that has to be interrupted. I'm asking for our courts to follow the federal system. If you're a repeat offender or a dangerous felon, then the public defender or your private lawyer has to rebut the presumption you have to be held. If they can't rebut that presumption, you stay. But I can't have dangerous individuals that get released and then re-offend in 24 hours, which I am telling you, because I have the data that bears that out too. These are 40 cases that come before a judge a year. It's, it's mind numbing how we got here. Today we have a no bond hold. It's a baby step towards what I'm calling pretrial presumptions, which is that you're held unless someone can make a really good case that you shouldn't be held. That's the presumption. But we got to do more here and we are going to. And I've got a mayor who's a good partner and I'm grateful for that because uh, I need more of that around the state. So throughout the next few weeks, I'll be doing a series of stories on issues regarding public safety and the homeless situation in Las Cruces. And throughout those pieces, you'll hear more from the governor in our exclusive interview, but also from the mayor, the chief of police, local businesses, and people who are directly impacted by the current situation and what's at stake. In the next hour of the KFOX 14 Morning News, she talks with me about her plan to bring thousands of affordable housing units to the area and who's going to pay for that.